All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Thursday, September 26th. We got a nine-game, I believe, nine-game MLB slate on today's video. Like we always do, we're going to go through each and every one of these games. I'm going to give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any other plays, like player props, that we like within the game as well. But as always, keep an eye on the pinned comment of this video. That is where all of my final plays, if you do want to fade me, all of my final plays will be in the pinned comment. In terms of last night, we go 0 and 2. Now, both were half unit plays, so it's not going to kill us. It's not going to ruin our season or anything like that, but uh, we do end up taking the L there. And you know what? I was thinking, is it dustpan worthy? Probably not, but if we went 2-0, and we might do a little money gun action, so we got to be on both sides of the fence fairly, right? So we did have the Mets and Braves first five under. That game gets postponed, um, so no dice there. And then the Rangers A's for first five under, four and a half. They scored five runs, um, or was it six runs in the first five? Those are the only runs they scored throughout the entire game, so bad look there. And then the Padres, Dodgers lost on the hook. We took that over. So unfortunately, an 0-2 night, but again, both losses were just half unit plays. Hopefully it can be a little bit better today. Day. Um, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. Um, appreciate all the love, even when we do have losing nights. So you know what? You guys make it worth it. And, and yes, to all the people that are like, oh, you're smiling a lot when you lose. Well, we've won more than we've lost. So you know what? It's sports betting. You're going to have losing days. And last night definitely was one of them. In fact, the end of the year, uh, last couple days have been kind of tough for us, right? But let's go ahead and jump into this. Again, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's rock. We're looking at Pittsburgh taking on Milwaukee. Uh, I told you in yesterday's video, now I didn't bet it myself, so I can't take a victory lap running like that, but I said, I think this is a low-scoring game in which Pittsburgh is going to have a chance to win. They win yesterday, plus 144 if you jumped on board with that one. Hopefully some people did. Today could be a little bit different of a story. We have Mitch Keller on the mound going up against Aaron Savale. Aaron Savale has been really, really struggling on the road this entire season, but Mitch Keller has been super kind of consistent, but in a bad way as of late. So I don't really know which team has the pitching advantage here. Uh, I would look at this and say, well, you're getting by far and away what I'd say the better offense in Milwaukee um, for minus 118 odds. So I think that that's where I'm going to lean to. Uh, I also just don't see Milwaukee losing two in a row here. Now, are they trying, you know, as hard as they can? They've already clinched their division. Doesn't matter. Maybe not, but I don't think that they dropped two to the Pirates. Like Milwaukee's one of those teams, like I keep telling you guys, that um, some of these teams that probably want to work on some things and at least head into the playoffs on a good note, I'd say Milwaukee is in that boat. So I think they bounce back today. Give me them on the money line. In terms of the total, uh, I'd lean towards the under. I think either Mitch Keller or Aaron Savale has a decent pitching performance today. I'm thinking that it's going to be, uh, you know, Aaron Savale because I'm leaning towards Milwaukee. But uh, just like yesterday, low scoring game, I, I like that spot. And even though Milwaukee's offense was looking good two games ago, 10 runs and and then the next one was seven runs. They only scored one run yesterday, so maybe their offense cooled off from those two games. Prior to that, they weren't looking all that fantastic. So, yeah, I think a low-scoring win for Milwaukee here, but uh, I'd rather not even consider the total if we were to make a final player. It would probably be Milwaukee or Milwaukee first five, um, if anything. All right, Kansas City taking on Washington. Kansas City doing what they need to do to hold on to that playoff spot. Uh, two games up on the Twins, two and a half up on the Mariners uh, because they get the win yesterday. Now we have Michael Walker on the mound going up against Patrick Corbin. Patrick Corbin uh, obviously has been a fadeable pitcher this season. He's going good start, bad start, good start, bad start. He is coming off a bad start. Um, that was against the Cubs. So if you are in the camp of, well, if he's following that trend, maybe it's time for a good start. Uh, but overall, I just don't see it. Last time now, it was last year, but last Last time he saw this Royals team, he allowed six earned runs, uh, six strikeouts, but four walks as well. So uh, I think that they can get to him. He's going to throw a lot of sinkers, sliders, cutters, the cutter being the particular one that the Kansas City Royals actually hit very well last 30 days in terms of runs above average per 100 cutter seen. They're fifth in the MLB. So I like that spot. Uh, we're going to get a ton of pitches from Michael Walk. I think he throws like six pitches. And Washington's offense isn't all that great, right? In this series so far, we've seen uh, zero runs from Washington in game one, and then game number two. Two. Let's see. Let's add it up. Zero runs from them in game number two. So I don't think their offense is firing on all cylinders whatsoever. So give me Kansas City in this spot. They're definitely priced out. Um, and based on, I think they're like minus 170. And based on how Kansas City has been playing, it's a team that I really don't want to bet on to close out the year. Like they are almost doing. Yesterday, yes, they actually, they actually looked, you know, capable. But even that one nothing extra innings win in game one of the series, like are they trying to piss away their playoff chances? So kind of tough there. Um, in terms of a total, uh, 
I almost just want to go contrarian to what we've seen. Um, zero runs from Washington, only four runs from Kansas City so far through two games. Give me the over, but that's really solely based on the fact that at some point like, the lid has to come off in this series, right? Not that either offense is cooking. I mean, Kansas City is a good offense, but they're not in Kansas City. In Washington, not so much, but uh, I just don't see Washington scoring zero runs. And if they can put up, you know, three runs or four runs, I think Kansas City still wins this game. We'd be looking at at, at little, you know, at the, at the smallest amount, five to four. So that's kind of where my head's at with that one. And all right, guys, before we do move on to the rest of the slate, let me shout out Underdog. They have a couple free squares for you guys today. First off, you get Dak Prescott for Thursday Night Football tonight, higher than .5 total yards. He can run for it. He can QB sneak for it. He can pass for it. Anything counts towards it. You check that one off the list. And then they also have a Patrick Mahomes .5, same deal, total yard square for this NFL Sunday. So go ahead and check it out, guys. That link is in the pinned comment. It's also in the description. And if you want to just go download Underdog and deposit yourself, use code GUYBOSS, and they all get you the same things, but that link in the pinned comment will auto-apply all of this, and you get all of these deals. So, new users get that deck press got today, and then uh, Patrick Mahomes is there for any user. So, even if you're currently on Underdog and you already have the app, go check out that Patrick Mahomes square. You'll also get up to $1,000 in a deposit bonus when signing up and depositing today, so go check that out, guys. Do not sleep on Underdog. One of my favorite ways to play in the NFL with picks this season. Go check it out. That link is in the pinned comment. All right, back to these MLB games. For game number three of the slate, we have Detroit taking on Tampa Bay. Uh, looks like Detroit is is really c- trying to form, uh, come into the playoffs in the best form possible. They're eight and two in their last ten games. They've won four straight. Uh, let's not forget they swept Kansas City. They won a series against Baltimore. Now they're two and zero oh in this series so far against Tampa Bay. And who does Detroit have next? The Chicago White Sox. So this team is cementing their chances, or not their chances, cementing their spot. The Twins are pissing it away. Detroit sneaks in, and now it looks like they're going to hold on to it. Uh, today, we have Reese Olsen going up against Tyler Alexander. Uh, I do think the Tigers have the better offense right now, the better pitcher, the better bullpen even. Um, you can make the argument for. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to lean towards Detroit. It's unfortunate because I feel like Detroit, for me, has been that team where we've seen really good spots for them and whatnot, but they always seem to be priced out. You know what I mean? So, minus 160 and beyond for this team Uh, I don't necessarily love that spot Um, but again they've been cruising they've been winning and Tampa Bay is kind of on the the opposite side of that they're five and five they've lost two straight it looked like maybe they were you know on a little bit of a streak until they met the big bag giant Tigers so yeah I'm gonna lean towards Detroit but I don't know if I get their final play wise just because of that um, you know that 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 number at minus 160 Uh, in terms of a total I could see Detroit getting to four runs um, you know yet again where they score seven like I said yesterday so maybe this is a spot in which we can consider Detroit Detroit team total over, which I don't know if that's come out of my mouth, uh, you know, whatsoever this season, but I would rather that than relying on this Tampa Bay offense to go out there and score a bunch of runs. In this series so far, they've scored one run in each of the games. They've scored one run or fewer in three of their last five games, and I want to say it's like uh, six of their last ten. So their their offense is not looking all that great, right? And we know Reese Olsen is a righty. That's where Tampa Bay tends to struggle, especially at on the road against righty. So yeah, Detroit team total over is probably the only thing I touch when it comes to a, a total in this spot. All right, White Sox, Angels, the World Series of all matchups on this slate. Like I keep saying, we got Flexen going up against Ty Anderson. What a battle of two, you know, Goliaths here uh, in terms of the MLB. Uh, the White Sox have won both games so far as I think they're actually... F- a pick them in game one, right? And then underdogs uh, yesterday. Today, Tyler Anderson, I do think, probably gives them a little bit of an edge. He's actually been decent on the road this year. Throws a ton of fastballs. That's what uh, the White Sox struggle against. Throws a ton of changeups. That's what the White Sox struggle against. I almost say that with a smirk because, well, every pitch essentially the White Sox struggle with. In fact, I think I saw when looking at it earlier, the only pitch they hit well is the knuckle curve. Like, imagine that. Imagine how bad you have to be that the only pitch is just the obscure knuckle curve uh, that you hit. In fact, if you made it this far in the video, comment knuckle curve, because I think it's hilarious that they stink so much uh, and have stunk so much that the only pitch that they're really hitting well is the knuckle curve. Good for them for that one, but you're not going to find that from too many pitchers, right? Uh, So this is a spot I would say that is a decent look at the Angels. In fact, uh, I, I, I laugh at it, but it's definitely got a chance of being a final play just because I don't think that either team is capable of sweeping the other here. So now we have two wins from the White Sox. Uh, I do think that the Angels uh, could pick one up. But uh, again, do we really, late in the year, things are wonky. We're only rolling with like half unit plays anyways. Do we really want to force something into a White Sox and Angels game? I'm not entirely sure. So uh, I do like the Angels. Uh, I think that they win it. But again, it's, it would be kind of crazy if we did roll with it. Uh, total sitting at seven and a half. So, so far we've seen um, a 3-2 game, a 4-3 game. Uh, I think Tyler Anderson could pitch okay today um he's 
2.8 ERA in his last five. He's been pitching well. Chris Flexen has been kind of up and down, coming off of a rough start, uh, rough start against San Diego. I'm going to lean towards the under, but obviously it's kind of shaking in my boots because you have two bad offenses, but still not two great pitchers. So it's kind of like which side of the coin is going to be the, the, the weighted side. You know what I mean, Are the offense is going to get to the bad pitching or is the pitching going to look better because it's bad offenses? That's the, that's the type of thing. It's like a coin flip. Colorado is taking on St. Louis yesterday. St. Louis wins 5-2. I actually kind of liked Colorado in that spot, but uh, again, if Colorado doesn't have high-scoring games in Colorado, usually they're going to have a tough time winning because then it's just playing like any other ballpark and their sort of altitude advantage and elevation and whatnot uh, goes away, even if you would call it an advantage, right? Um, today, we have Kyle Freeland going up against Kyle Gibson, so we have the Battle of Kyles, which, you know, market calendars for this one, um, but overall, I-, I could see both sides being made a case for here. Um, you have St. Lewis, who's decent against lefties, um, and Colorado, who's going up against Kyle Gibson, who hasn't necessarily looked all that fantastic. Um, He's allowed, I think, I want to say it's like, uh, actually, what is it, 2 point? It might be a 3.4 ERA in his last five, or 2.4. It could be doing him a disservice here. Um, But I have 3.4, but now that I remember it, I think it's 2.4. But either way, neither pitcher's been all that great. So do you trust the idea of this being a high-scoring game, and you're looking at the over, and Colorado has a chance? Or do you stick to who the better team is in St. Louis? For me, um, you know, after two wins from St. Louis, I do think that I look at the plus money with Colorado, plus 110. Uh, neither one of these teams should care all that much about this spot. Um, St. Louis is six and a half games out of the wild card, so they're probably not looking like uh, they're doing much. And then Colorado, I think, is like 30 games out of the wild card in the NL. So uh, Colorado can probably steal one here for plus money. Total sitting at 10 and a half. I lean towards the over again, but hopefully you can tell in like sort of the tone of my voice when we like a spot or like a game. This is not really one where we're like eagerly running to the window to try and get a bet down. And as I say that, it's like I just said I might bet on the Angels, and yet I'm here saying, I don't think this one's all that sexy. Well, yeah, I guess guess we're a psycho. Oakland taking on Texas. We've done the same bet two days in a row and got kicked in the teeth both times. The first five under has not hit in either one of these games. Yesterday, the under in the game cashes, and that was kind of something we were leaning towards as well. But the first five, all of their runs came in the first five. Today, we have um, JT Ginn going up against Kumar Rocker. I still think that's one of the best names in the MLB. Uh, Ginn, 2.6 ERA over his last five. Kumar, two starts on the year. He's pitched four innings, three innings, allowed one one run in each of those. Um, He's striking out a decent amount of guys through Four innings, he had seven Ks. Through three innings, he had five Ks. So uh, worth it there. He got a little aggressive in that game against uh, Texas, or excuse me, against Toronto. He had four walks in three innings, so not all that tremendous there. Uh, here in this spot, I guess I would lean towards uh, Texas to, to win this one. This would be them winning the series. Is it the best spot in the world? No. Could Oakland, uh, can you make a case for Oakland? Sure. They've been getting on base um, against righties in the last 30 days. They're top 10 in both average and WRC+. plus. So they're bringing those guys home. Um, but overall, I think I'm going to trust Kumar Rocker, uh, versus JT again now again similar to what we've said about a few of these it's not exactly the 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 sexy of of spot or anything like that Um, I do almost want to lean towards the first five under again but I promise you I won't touch it because I've jinxed it or or, you know pissed it away each time Uh, I am going to lean towards the under because though we don't have tremendous pitching on the mound like I like yesterday's pitchers a lot more Um, that was Bradford and Basso they only went like you know three innings each so we have not called this all that correctly right Um, but overall I don't think either one of these offenses is that tremendous even though the a is 10th in average 10th in wrc plus like what have we really seen that result in for them you know what i mean like they've scored i think it's like three two zero two four one five runs and then one run in this series so it's like they're kind of all over the place not scoring consistently so i'll lean towards the under i want the first five under but i'm not touching it today all right, we have Garrett Cole and the Yanks going up against Patrick Corbin and Baltimore. This should be uh, a very, very good matchup here. Uh, last two times Corbin pitched against this good Yankees offense, he went seven innings. Um, both of the games allowed a combined total of five hits, zero earned runs, and had 15 strikeouts. You look at Garrett Cole in his last start, I guess we could say, because um, his last start against the actually, I think that's the last two starts for Garrett Cole overall, not against the Yankees. Um, Garrett Cole's last start against the Yankees, uh, excuse me, I'm all over the place now. Let's reset. Corbin Burns' last start against the Yankees, uh, six innings, two hits. Uh, I think it was only like four hits or whatever. So his last two starts in general, five hits combined, 15 strikeouts. He's been going off. Garrett Cole's last two starts, 
tale of two different tapes. He pitched really well against Oakland, and then he went up against Boston and got shelled through four and a third. Seven earned runs in that one. I think it was only like five hits, and they didn't even hit any home runs, so it was a lot of doubles and whatnot. But his last start against this Baltimore team looked okay. Six innings, seven strikeouts, one earned run, no home runs, just one walk. A uh, little bit up there on pitches, though, 17 pitches per inning. So uh, what Garrett Cole are we going to get? Not necessarily sure, but uh, I don't think this is a bad spot to consider Baltimore here for the plus money. You have Corbin Burns coming in, pitching at like an all-time high, um, and, you know, going up against the Yankees team that, yes, uh, they probably do look to get a win today, but for plus 120, uh, plus 120 and beyond, I could see Corbin Burns, that, that argument being made. Now, what I will say, and I said I could see it, I don't know if I get there fully because I kind of like the over in this spot. We've seen two games so far that go over this number, and this number drops um, to seven and a half, right? But I've seen some eights out there, and you have two aces on the mound. Like, a lot of people are going to be thinking under, under, under. Um, where I'm sitting, it's kind of like, well... Baltimore's offense looks like it may be starting to return to what it was. And the Yankees, we know what that offense can provide. Maybe we see both of these offenses kind of, um, you know, do better than the pitching. It's a lot like when we talked about, uh, was it the, the, the L.A. and Chicago game? It's like, well, which is going to happen? Is it offense going to beat the pitcher or pitcher beat the offense? I would be inclined to say there's a chance that the offense could beat the pitching here. So, again, it's kind of wonky to, to say that when you have two really good pitchers on the mound. But um, something that I could get to today. But I think I would probably, if I had a gun to my head, uh, like odds wise, I like Baltimore, but if I had a gun in my head in terms of like well, who I think wins this game, I'd probably lean towards the Yankees because I don't think they dropped three straight against a divisional rival, you know, just before the playoffs. So Yankees in the over, um, but I understand that's kind of like I'm on that sounds like I'm on the fence with that one. Those definitely are the two leans Yankees in the over, but you could make such an argument for Baltimore in the under as well. You know what I mean? All right, Minnesota pumping some crowd noise. They get a win yesterday, eight to three. Um, I hope it's, I mean, I don't hope, I don't really care either way if it's the Tigers or the Twins or, you know, the the Mariners who get in, but um, I, I, I don't, it might not be too little too late, right? They're two games back here. We've seen some struggle from the Royals. Maybe the Twins do get in, but I just can't imagine being in that clubhouse right now. The Red Sox, like, killed them. If they don't make the playoffs, the Red Sox killed them. They lost that doubleheader, got smoked in both of them, and they had the pitching advantage in one of them with Pablo on the mound, but here we are today, 8-3 uh, to three win yesterday. I want to say Miami got to um, who, Simeon Woods Richardson, right? But then they battle back and score some runs late, so good for them. On the mound for them today is going to be David Festa going up against Valente Beloso. I would say Minnesota. I've been saying Minnesota, but Minnesota hasn't been winning. Um, Miami's numbers look decent against righties last 30 days. Minnesota's look pretty putrid. Um, but David Festa throws a bunch of fastballs, and if there's one pitch that Miami's been struggling with lately in the last 30 days, it's certainly the fastball. They're dead last in runs in terms of runs above average per 100 fastball scene so it's not like um you know minnesota's offense has been that much better but i think that this pitch mix you know weirdly enough can fit pretty well so I'll lean Minnesota. Um, I don't mind the under, though. I think that they could win like a 5-3 game, a 4-3 game, uh, that type of thing. Uh, we saw yesterday, you know, three runs from Miami, and then they go dormant. So it's like, okay, like, they, they, yes, they can get to uh, a righty or get to your starter, but they just don't have the consistency, um, you know, consistent offense. So I'll lean towards the under. And for what it's worth, Minnesota averaging four and a half runs per game this year, uh, Miami averaging just under four. So even if the teams just do what they've done on average this year, uh, we should see an under cash in this spot. Dodgers taking on the Padres. We had, what, six runs through the first five innings. We had over seven and a half last night. They get one run in the sixth, and then nothing, seven, eight, nine. So, uh, unfortunate loss there. I did like the look of that. Uh, clearly, we saw, you know, both pitchers pitch well, but not necessarily well enough. Dylan sees five hits, three earned runs through five innings. Um, then we had Jack, uh, Jack Flaherty here, three earned runs through five innings on four hits. So, it's like, I think that we were in the right spot, just maybe not the right time for that play. Today's a little bit different. That total jumps to eight and a half it makes sense why you have walker bueller on the mound um pitching against joe musgrove i still gonna lean towards the over here in this spot um i think san diego can win this one i think that they might have i don't want to say a pitching advantage but uh joe musgrove has been pitching very very well lately and walker bueller has just kind of been all over the place so we talked about corbin burns his last two starts looking pretty damn good uh joe musgrove 12 innings of work in his last two starts here zero earned runs and 17 strikeouts 17 strikeouts now if you want to make a case for the Dodgers being able to get to him um he's not exactly you know had the best 
past against the Dodgers. 217 in terms of plate appearances against. 307 average against. A Woba of 364. Slugging of 447. So, yeah, not exactly the best spot, I guess, um, in terms of teams against. But he's pitching really, really well right now. I do kind of think that I'm inclined to, to trusting it to some degree. Now, he is on the road. He struggles on the road a little bit. Um, I still do like the over, like I mentioned. But um, I think in terms of a, you know, a spot here for, for some plus money, only plus 105. But I think San Diego could be the place. So San Diego and the over. Um, and both those are kind of 50-50 in terms of which one uh, I like more, to be completely honest. But, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's show. We had a quick one. Only nine games on the slate. Hope you guys do still enjoy these MLB videos. Um, still pulling in the views and still getting a lot of uh, interaction in the comments. So we won't stop betting MLB until the season's over. Uh, I know focus could be on football and WNBA and even NBA is coming back, you know, in a month. Like, uh, a lot of sports going on, but we're willing to grind and put out a bunch of content for you guys. So hope you guys do appreciate that. And if you do, all, you, all I can ask is commenting, hitting that like button. If you're new, subscribing. Um, that's how you can show your appreciation because I appreciate the feedback and I appreciate the reciprocation of the work we put in. Um, you guys are amazing at that. Like, I, I can't believe the comments we get daily and whatnot. So I do appreciate it. And tell you guys all the time, I don't take any of this for granted. Uh, I really don't. So appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.